looking after Bruce. But uh, I feel well about the subject because uh, the starting point for me is very simple. We can't lose time because we never possessed it. Time is the only thing, perhaps, we can't possess. We do not have. Time has us. I have 20 minutes. The 20 minutes have me. Of extended time, 
Chronology fits us into the order of things. Suffering can be chronic, but never passion. Only through drugs, within artificial paradises, as an illusion to experience a permanent climax. Ecstasy as a durable state. Chronology cripples us because we are only mortal and we have and we shall pass. Machines, as we all know, in this room live longer, occasionally at least. <laughs> the computer scientist and engineer Danny Hillis, who has played a decisive role in constructing the massively parallel architecture of so-called supercomputers, amongst other things, has been working on the prototypes of a clock, which began operation in the year 2001, as far as I know, and is planned to run exact for exactly 10,000 years. The Long Now project <coughs> contains the perverse or scandalous attempt to stretch the now, das jetzt, into eternity, or relative eternity, which is a nice paradox, I come back to that. A very special attack of the presence against the rest of time like a famous film by Alexander Kluge was titled 25 years ago. As far as our imagination reaches into the future, things will continue to happen. In an open cosmology, history has no end. Freeman Dyson postulates in 1979 in his book or in his text, Time Without End, and attacks the antagonism within which all fantasies of eternity propagated by the earthlings are stuck. Again, Freeman Dyson, to be immortal with a limited memory is extremely unsatisfying. Immortality can be hardly desirable. If we are forced to delete all traces of our derivation in order to create space for collecting new experiences. This is, I'm sorry, my translation from Rolf Hacken's translations of Rolf Dyson's text into German back into English, so it might be not completely identical with, with what Freeman Dyson uh, wrote. The ancient Greeks understood only too well the dilemma. We could get ourselves with this strange chronocracy as the dominant time mode and they introduced two further concepts as we know Aeon and Kairos. They are the juvenile antipodes of powerful Kronos who ultimately devoured his own children. We find the transcendental dimension of Aeon suspect, time that stretches far, far beyond our and the Earth's lifetime which is beyond the collapse of stars in the black holes of the universe, a time form that is supposedly poor, pure. The fastest way from zero to infinity, as the pater physicist and theater avant-gardist Alfred Jari once defined God. By contrast, Kairos stands for the art of doing the right thing at the right moment. He is the God of the auspicious moment, der Gott des günstigen Augenblicks in German, the opportunity one has to seize, to jump at, otherwise it passes unused. All of you know this guy, Kairos, but I just want to remind you about the haircut the old Greeks have given uh, Kairos. He has long hair at the front and a bold <laughs> head at the back, which means you have to grasp him. As soon as he's passed, he's gone forever. You can't hold him from the back. Jean-Francois Lyotard, it's already 25 years ago, who established with his exhibition project Immaterial what became Media Arts later wrote in one of the